In today's video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use Photoshop to transform a dull image like this one into a dramatic, eye-catching piece of art like this one. I've done a video around this technique before, but it's one that I really, really enjoy. I think it's an incredibly powerful way of injecting some real fine art life into otherwise dull shots that you might delete. And so I thought it was worth returning to and to show how Photoshop's recent tools make this even easier to do. This is so, so simple. It takes just a few steps, but the results are incredible. So the shot that I'm using is one I took on a walk yesterday on New Year's Day on a beach near Edinburgh. Now, I'd taken my camera because I wanted to get a few snaps, but I didn't really get anything that particularly excited me. But I did get this shot, and by itself it's really nothing special. It's a little bit dark and it's not compositionally very good. It's just a very forgettable snap from a beach. But I liked that the image was at least a memento of the first shot I've taken in 2023, and I thought it could be a really good candidate for using this technique. So enough of me waffling on, let's actually dive in and take a look at the shot. So the reason that this shot stood out to me as a good candidate is that we've just got this solo figure standing quite small in the frame. It doesn't dominate the picture, it's not a complicated uh, figure with lots of things around it. It's very much sort of by itself and it's got a lovely reflection coming down on the sand. And that's been very much the same thing with the other shots that I've used this technique with. It's very much about having a small figure in amongst this big, lovely expanse of blur. So let's actually do this and show you just how easy it is. I will just start by straightening the image up because that horizon is a little bit wonky. That is fine, but that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go edit in, edit in Photoshop. And so here we are in Photoshop, and I'm just gonna use Photoshop's new object selection tool. I think in the previous video, I used um, maybe the pen tool or the, the one of the lasso tools to uh, select my subject, but this makes it even easier because I can just go object selection, we hover over, it highlights that figure, and all we need to do is click, and it will just automatically select that figure from its background, which is great. So I just do uh, copy, paste, I will rename this figure and that is basically most of the work done. So now we've got our figure in place, what I need to do is uh, is remove the figure and the shadow from the original image to give me a completely clean background. Reason being is that if I apply that blur with this original figure in place, that figure is just going to become sort of a blurry dark patch and it isn't going to look very good. Thankfully that's incredibly easy to do. I've got the patch tool selected and we can just draw a rough shape around this, drag it over here, let go, turn off our figure, deselect, and it's pretty much done it um, for us. It is not the neatest thing. You can see that these uh, lines don't line up, but because we're gonna be applying this blur to the image, it really doesn't matter as long as the figure is pretty much gone. We don't need to worry about these rocks or other items here. We don't need to do any kind of cleanup. The image is basically perfect as it is. So to do the blur, we go to filter, and then we need to open the blur gallery and specifically the path blur. So this is basically gonna give us uh, the image and an arrow. Now the arrow says what direction we want that blur to go. Now I like to do this by lining the arrow up along a major point in the image, usually along the coast. So in this case, it's following the line of the beach where the water's hitting it rather than specifically following the horizon. You know, this line isn't that much different to the actual horizon line, but I do just find that by allowing the blur to naturally follow the lines in the image, it just looks a bit more natural. The line's in place and our speed right now is at 50%. So let's make it very easy and we just whack it straight up to 500. And straight away, we've got this lovely ethereal smoothed out image. It's very much like the sort of image that you might have seen with people who do um, ICM or intentional camera movement photography. So in that, you would use a slow shutter speed on your camera, maybe half a second, and you would swipe your camera from side to side as you take photos of the landscape in order to get these kinds of um, ethereal blurry effects. But we are creating it in Photoshop because we also want that figure. So we press OK and the computer will render that. This will be fast or slow depending on how powerful your machine is. Gives you a moment to have a little bite of leftover pizza. 
So our landscape is blurred, and if we just turn that figure back on, it puts it nicely back in the frame exactly where it was before. But of course, it's just the figure by itself, so it doesn't look particularly realistic. So what I'm gonna do is just copy, paste, transform, bring it back into position, right click, and then flip vertical. Let me drag it down, line it up with the feet. Might be easier at this point to just press OK, zoom in, and then with the move tool, selected we can just use the arrow keys on our keyboard to nudge that up and down so we just wanted to connect with the foot there exactly as it would have done if that was the real reflection i'm just going to rename this layer as shadow just so that i know exactly which one's which but of course right now we need to do some work to this uh, shadow in order to make it a little bit more realistic i'm going to start off by opening the transform tool right clicking and we're going to go with perspective and we're just gonna narrow it down just to give the impression that it is kind of cascading down the beach in the way that it, uh, it should be. And then free transform, and if I hold shift and drag this, I'm just gonna make it a bit longer. Because if we go and look at the original, let me zoom in, you can see that the shadow here is longer than the figure itself. So I'm go back into Photoshop. So I think something like that already gives uh, a much better sense of proportion. But of course, it's just a big, bold black shape. So we do need to do a little bit of work here. So first of all, I'm just gonna create a layer mask and then with by pressing G to bring up my gradient, making sure that it is white and black, I can just drag a line like this to cause a gradient so that it naturally blends into the background exactly like the shadow would. And I think that looks pretty nice, but we can do a little bit more by adding a little bit of a Gaussian blur. We don't need much. I'd say maybe 3.6 is enough. It's just enough to help it blend with that background a bit more. See, I think 7.4 is a bit too much. Maybe around 4. Something like that I think looks fine. And I'm just going to nudge it back up to connect with that shoe. And that's it. It is not the most perfect of shadows. You could spend a little bit more time um, uh, tweaking this, making it look a little bit better. One thing I might do is use the blur tool, make sure it's at 100%, and just add some additional blur to the top so that it kind of fades out a little bit more. Something like that. I think it looks a lot more natural now. But we're not done because now I'm going to do a little bit of color work on the background itself because, of course, if we don't have those figures selected, we still have this lovely, beautiful, empty seascape background. But it definitely could do with uh, being emphasized a bit. And this is great. We can go into Filter, Camera Raw Filter. This is going to bring up the same tools that you will have in Lightroom. So you can really play around with the colors. Because we've got a bit of an abstract fine art um, seascape here, we can really play around with the temperature emphasize those purples because we had a lovely sunset going on that but the shot was taken just a little bit after so we can maybe up those up the magentas in the white balance slightly increase the warmth bring down those highlights a little bit maybe add a bit of dehaze just to kind of give it a bit more punch with the whites a touch and certainly we can boost that vibrancy a bit and as we do it really brings out some of these lovely purple tones but we can do that even more in the color mixer. And at this point, this is just adjust to taste. There's no right or wrong way. For me, I wanna bring out these lovely kind of purples and oranges that we had in the sunset, but you might wanna go a completely other way. So this is just me playing around at this point. The image was kind of fine as it was. I just wanna give it a little bit more of a boost. I wanna make those oranges a bit more orange. Maybe bring that blue slightly into a tealy thing here so that we've got a bit of color contrast between the sky and the beach. Um, I love that those purples um, are so rich on the beach itself, so I might boost the saturation there. And again, because it's this fine art abstract scene, you can stand to push these sliders a bit harder than you might do um, from uh, for a regular landscape. Certainly boosting those oranges hard. Plus 60. So we've got some really stunning colors in this scene. And maybe in the luminance, I'm just gonna increase that blue, that lightness, because it's a little bit of a dark stripe along the middle. So this is just helping balance things out a touch. And by slightly darkening the oranges, it's making them a little bit more rich. 
So I think we've got lovely tones here. You very much get the vibe just by looking at this image by itself of a lovely sunset on a beach. So we click OK and it will apply it to our background and then we just turn that figure back on and there is our image done. How simple is that? I really love this technique. I think the last thing I would do here is probably apply a 16-9 crop so that it has a little bit more of a almost panoramic cinematic quality here. And I think I would just nudge it up to be about here. But I really, really love this effect. I think this shot worked perfectly for it because, as I said before, this figure is very quite solitary in the image. I did try it on another shot, which I will show you, which is this one here, um, with these figures walking the dog. But I think because they are um, so much bigger in the frame, I just don't think it works quite as well. It looks too photoshopped. It just looks like they're being pasted onto a background and it doesn't really have the same effect to it, I think. Whereas this one, with this figure being such a tiny part of the scene, it really stands out with all that negative space around it. But that brings me to an end of today's video. I really hope you've enjoyed seeing this technique again, seeing how Photoshop's tools with the object selection make it even easier to do. This really is so simple and it's so powerful. And the more you do it, the more you'll start to recognize scenes when you are out and about that you think it could work really well for. But more than that, it will actually allow you to go back through your catalog of photos you've already got and have a look and see if there are any that you think would work really well with it. And if you do get some good results, I would really encourage you to share them with me with at BatteryHQ on Instagram, because I would be fascinated to see what kind of effects you get using these same techniques. But if you have enjoyed this video and you have found it useful, please do give it a like and of course consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already, and I will see you next time.